everybody, I'm Dave McClelland along with Steve Evans and we are at Orange County International Raceway in Irvine, California for the 1983 NHRA Winston World Finals, the final event on this championship drag racing season and what a season it's been. Hi family, Thanks friends. This is Mark Candle. The world I'm here in my home in you see him win the Hartwick. The world championship that year I'm going to make a video about this display I put together in tribute to my favorite drag strip that I was associated with from beginning to end, actually. And I had previously made a video. All it had was a soundtrack to hear from that. And But having so many family and friends come over and look at this and telling them stories about it, they all kind of suggested I need to make a new video and tell the same stories in the video. So that's why I'm here. <clears throat> and I guess my stories associated with this track start actually when I was 13 years old, when I'm sitting in my front yard. By then, in 1967, uh, Southern California, where I was growing up, all around Coast Highway and Newport Boulevard and such, uh, I was quite used to seeing a lot of nice cars. You know, Camaros and Mustangs had been around. My favorite were the Plymouth Barracudas and cars like that, and GTOs. And so I kind of always knew what kind of car I wanted to get. And by the time I was 16, I, I had some neighbors down the street where I lived, and they had a 57 Chevy Nomad in their driveway for sale, and uh, said $500 on it. That's the car, but not without that paint job. Actually, when I first bought the car, it was that Chevy Brown with that kind of a eggshell white top represented with this. When I found that at eBay, I was quite happy because it represents my original first car at 16 years old. Ended up looking more like this one. But I knocked on that door and there was an older couple and I guess the, the man had just had a stroke and couldn't drive and his elderly wife said the car was too big, they were gonna just sell it. I said, I have $238 cash in my pocket. The old man said, well, honey, I think that's enough. So I left that, their driveway with a 57 Bel Air Nomad station wagon, 283 two-speed power glide. And at the time, I was working here at Al Martinez Custom Paint and Body. That's Big Al in the top and Little Al in the middle. And at the time, Al Martinez uh, Body Shop was famous, certainly in Southern California, should, worldwide, actually. They were one of the best. They were some of the people that started all the fancy pinstriping and lace printing and candy jobs and pearlescence. At the time I was their lot boy, I took care of all their, they, they also sold cars, so I, they had about 26 cars in the lot and I took care of all of them. And I also did a lot of uh, helping do things like wet sanding and I got, my fun part was I got to drive all around Orange County getting what they call courtesy bids for, con, for work and all parts and stuff. And they always wanted me to advertise their cars. And this little dune buggy there kind of represents the fact that they had a similar year dune buggy, but theirs was all fancy, multicolored, gold leaf lettering, Al Martinez. It had a Porsche engine that would do wheelies, and it was badass cool. Or I drove around in a 66 Chevy Impala 427 four speed. I don't have to tell you how much fun that was. So when I'm 13 years old, oh, uh, I guess I'll run through these af after I had uh, my Nomad, that was my motorcycle. Uh, my second car was actually a 62 Impala, a 327, and uh, there's a picture of that. And there's actually a picture of that Impala at this racetrack, up pulling up to the starting lines. So my 62 Impala was a pretty nice car. I'm doing a little burnout there. And then, uh, actually I had a 71 Dodge Colt. Was that, that car was so much fun. It used to beat Camaros and Mustangs. And it just flat hauled ass. And then I had a 68 a Camaro, which was a fine car in perfect shape. 327, three speed uh, turbo hydro. And then, bang, a 16-year-old girl did that to my front end. 
Yeah, but then an $8,000 Mercedes Benz paint job and all new Corvette wheels and tires and everything made it the, one of the nicest Camaros people used to say that they'd ever seen. So I also had a 55 Ford panel truck that I called the Moose, and the license plate said 55 Moose. Uh, it's represented here. Uh, my Camaro is in the Camaro line. My 57 Nomads here. My 62 Impala parked right next to its picture. So those were my cars uh, that I owned out in California before I moved to New York. But back to the track. When I'm 13 years old, uh, a friend of mine's father owned the construction company that was building the racetrack. Uh, and one of the things they had to do was uh, put up the guardrails, which was a big job because they're like 1,500 feet of guardrails down both sides of the track. And uh, these pictures all kind of represent the track. Uh, by the way, my Nomad, uh, I, I took the, when I bought it, I went to Charlie's Junkyard and, and they specialize in high performance vehicles and imports like Jaguars and Mercedes. And I said, what do you got for a, that'll drop nicely into a 57 Nomad? And, and he said, well, I have a 65 Corvette drivetrain, 327 Rochester fuel system on it, Muncie four speed, you know, you can have that. 300 bucks for, or no, it was 350 for the engine, 300 for the trans. And uh, so I bought that through it in a friend's pickup truck and took the Nomad and, and the engine to Ray Alley's Engine Masters in Garden Grove, California. I had met Ray Alley in the pits at, at the drag strip and I knew he was the place I wanted to rebuild my engine. And they, he said, well, well, what do you want, you know? And I said, as fast as you can make it go at, at, at the county. He said, okay, it's going to be full race. So I ended up with Mickey Thompson, 10 and 3 quarter to 1 pistons, uh, perfect circle, rings, and uh, just everything. Uh, the crank was uh, balanced and polished, and the heads were shaved and ported. The whole thing was done. And in fact, all the... These vendors represented in the back here. I had Fram filters, I had Goodyear tires, I had a Holly 850 dual feed Holly carburetor. Uh, I had a Hurst shifter pressure plate and uh, clutch and linkage. I used hook, hooker headers. I had an Edelbrock aluminum low boy uh, manifold. I used Champion spark plugs. I always used SDP on my gaskets were Mr. Gaskets. I had some moon racing equipment stuff. My ignition system was Axel dual point uh, with the distributor coil and uh, even the yellow wires. So my, all these product vendors here are, that are represented that you would see at the track were also people that were all under the hood of my nomad. So back to my history of the track. One day that's the last drag race at Orange County International Raceway. There's my girlfriend at the time, Ann, ended up being the, my wife and mother of my three kids. And by the way, those are the tickets and the pit pass to the last drag race. This is all that's left of my t-shirt from the day. There's Ann's original t-shirt. All these were purchased from the track. So as my story goes, one day I'm 13 years old, a pickup truck pulls up on my front lawn right on the grass and the guy's honking his horn. It's, it's a friend of ours, Ron. His dad owns the construction company. He says, we need people to help us put up the guardrails, which are represented with by these uh, uh, red and white popsicle sticks I use. But the guardrails, you know, they were quite long. And... Uh, so they said, we're going to, uh, we're not going to pay you, but we're going to feed you all day, you know, all the food you want and, and free tickets to the opening show. And, uh, you know, you'll get to go to the pits and all that stuff. And, and we thought that was a fair enough deal. We were excited. So I jumped in the back of the pickup truck and went down to the track, which is only about 10 miles away from where I lived. 
In fact, on a quiet night, you could hear the two dragsters going down the track from my house. So anyhow, I spent the next seven and a half hours tightening the bolts on the, these guardrails. Uh, there was a big crew, uh, big huge augers digging the holes, another flatbed truck with all the posts, and then they would drop the posts and the guys mixing cement, and then other guys cutting the post off at a 45 degree angle, and then drill, a huge drill, drilling the hole through it, then that's where I came in. Uh, we, my little crew, we drove the big bolts through the post, and I put the washers and nut on it and tightened it all down, and then they cut off the excess, and we went down the track, and it was actually the spectator side was racing against the uh, pit side, and we beat them by about 150 feet. So much to my delight, uh, not only did they feed us all day really well, they... They gave me and a few others of us, because they really appreciated our hard work. And one guy in particular, one of the owners, uh, Mike, he, he thought I was a pretty neat 13-year-old kid, all the work I did. So he signed this little card on the back of it. It was an official, uh, you know, it was the official logo card. And on the back it says, lifetime uh, membership, free admission and pit pass. And he signed and dated it and put his initials that everybody would recognize was the real deal. So uh, I ended up going to the first drag race held at o OCIR <laughs> and for the next four years until I was 16 years old, I finally lost that car. And, and, but by then I was driving my own cars and taking it to the track. So that was how I got started. And, uh, you know, like I said, I grew up around a lot of hot rod cars, even at 13 years old, in the streets of Southern California, Orange County. It's, uh, you know, like the biggest uh, place on the planet for nice cars. But when you're 13 years old and you've never stood right next to uh, something like Don Garlitz nitro-burning Hemi-powered, you know, uh, dragster and you've never even heard one before and, and it fires up 25 feet away from you and the, you immediately feel the ground shake, you smell that nitro burning, it's just, I was injected, infected and addicted to drag racing right then. I'd never experienced anything like that and then to watch those guys get out on the track and, and do things like uh, jet cars and Fire burnouts with Shirley Cha Cha Muldowney, the first elegant queen of drag racing. Sox and Martin's little uh, 71 Dodge Colt. I love those cars, they were awesome. Here, here's an interesting picture. You'll see that both sides had identical ETs of 641, but the guy. Uh, on the uh, tower side, he was faster by 234 compared to 229. But the spectator side has the little light lit up for, as the winner. And why is that? Because he also has the little light next to his time. It shows that he got the whole shot. He left first. So that represents a whole shot win at OCIR. The other guy's three, uh, six miles an hour faster, but lost because one guy left first. So that's why that picture was added to this display. And uh, this is basically what the view I would have often sitting in, in the, the stands. All of these pictures I took with my camera. Uh, this picture here, th that I would quite often be sitting in that particular area. Uh, there's uh, four different, four years of display posters that they would have for the Manufacturers Funny Car Championships. And I have in my collection a recording of the, the radio uh, commercial recordings talking about bring your cameras, bring your movie cameras. Orange County International Raceway is going to attempt something uh, never, you know, attempted before. We, we are going to line up, and that's correct, 100 of them, 
all the funny cars down the length of the track and fire them all up at the same time, which they did. And uh, to this day, I will have to say that's the loudest decibel thing I've ever heard at one time was somewhere around 100 funny cars fired up at the same time. And uh, they were right, bring your cameras, because it was a sight to behold, and a lot of people did. So <clears throat> that's represented here with my own collection of the, these are all replicas of uh, some of the most famous funny cars ever made. So some of the things about the track itself. I guess I'll start in the parking lot. By the way, I do a lot of my own decals. I have my own little set of decals here's one of my favorite ones to keep on trucking with with the mr natural trucking down uh, in southern california at the time you saw a lot of vans with the keep on trucking stuff and uh the parking lot had limited space and in fact a picture like this one right here you can see the the grandstands are packed and and the, the parking lot was also packed and they would often apologize uh, you know they would tell everybody we apologize the the Irvine company only leased us so much room and so we uh, we could only dedicate so much of it to parking and and if you really want to park in our parking lot you have to get in through the the main gate out on Sand Canyon Road and do what we call the raceway road you have to turn on to that and get in the main gate man if you're not past, uh, in that gate by like 9.30 in the morning, you're probably not going to be able to park in the parking lot. You're going to end up parking out on Raceway Road or maybe even out on Sand Canyon Road, but they would send a van out to pick people up after about 11 o'clock. So what happened was all these cars started filling up. Now Orange County is full of a bunch of car clubs. They're everywhere. Uh, Chevy Fords, all of them. There was like the Hemorrhoids. The hem they were one of the badass guys, and they, they drove a bunch of Cudas and, and uh, Challengers and Roadrunners and Daytonas and such like that. They were a big club. Uh, there was a panel uh, truck uh, club that I used to park with all the time because I had my I had my 55. By the way, they had a 69 Boss 302 Mustang mo motor in it, 378 horsepower, with a C6 Ford transmission four speed with overdrive that truck literally hauled ass and people would never expect it to so anyhow back to the, the history of this track the parking lot would get packed and it didn't take long that people realized you want to back your car into the stall because the Orange County International Raceways parking lot just like overnight and every event became the biggest car show you'd ever want you know everywhere the cars that were awesome and your tongue would be hanging out looking at some of the cars you'd see at the at the tracks parking lot which is represented by some of these so then what happened was i think it was maybe the second event that somewhere up in the tower here you had a guy get on the microphone saying he's with the the Ford, you know, car clubs, the Ford gang, the Fomico people, and he invited all the Ford and Mercury guys to kind of park all together in one area of the parking lot. And he said, but we're gonna, not going to be greedy. We're going to take the forest park. And so that's what happened. All the Ford guys started parking together. And it was like the next event. By the way, it's represented by that little Ford sign there. And then soon after that, the GM guys, they, they, they hung a sign. See, the only thing not represented here in this display is the bleachers and the chain link fence separating the parking lot. But it was like a big eight-foot fence. And, and so there was a, the Ford guys, they hung a sign, Fomico, Ford Motor Company, that's represented here. And they hung a sign. So then the GM guys did that. And then so all the Chevys, Pontiacs, Buicks, Oldsmobiles, Cadillac guys, GM people, they started parking there. And then sure enough, with the Mopar guys, 
They ended up at the nicest area too, closer to the ticket booth. And that's where all the show cars and stuff, like all the George Barish TV shows, Dracula, the Munsters, the Batman, the, what do you got there? The, the that's the the monkey's car and the surf surfer. All these are all, you know, exact replicas of the real thing. So all the Mopar guys, they had their spot, and and then it became almost like an unwritten law. You don't take one of these pony car Mustangs, and you don't ever park it down here in where the Cuda Club. There was a, a group there called the Cuda Club. You don't park your pony car in the big fish row, and you you don't take a Barracuda, the 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 fastback Barracudas, and you never park them down here where you're going to find the Thunderbirds and the Galaxies and the, you know the Fairlanes. And, you know you just don't do that. It, it just became an un, unwritten law. And after a while, I think it was Mr. Norm, so represented by Norms garage and uh, Norm's Dodge dealership, he was smart. He started parking a Dodge parts van in the parking lot, represented here, and uh, he started selling parts right to the race fans in the parking lot, and so soon enough, the GM guys were doing the same thing, and you know, and, and then the Ford guys were doing the same thing, so the parking lot became not only the biggest car show you'd ever saw, but it ended up being the biggest like swap meet, everybody, you'd have people running over and saying, hey man, weren't you looking for an intake manifold for a small block Chevy? You know, I'll be right back, I have one, you know. So that's what's represented here. The cars all would back in so they could pop their hoods because the spectators would be walking up and down and you want to show off your hood, you can't do it if the cars are nose to nose. So that's what this parking lot looks like it did. You would have all the Volkswagen guys parking together like this group of vans and buses and Volkswagens. I had a girlfriend that had a, what was that, a, a 914 Porsche represented there. I loved it, but hers was jet black. Uh, my sisters, one of my sisters had a, a VW square back. Speaking of sisters, my sister Sue, she had a 65... Chevy Malibu SS 327 four-speed. When I found this one at eBay, I flipped out because I th and hers had Krager wheels. I thought, my God, that's my sister Sue's car. And she one time said to me, Mark, you know how to drive a four-speed, so take me out and show me how to drive my car. So we went all up and down Newport Boulevard and Coast Highway. I raced about four different cars, blew them all away, showed her how to drive a four-speed and uh, she loved it and she was pretty darn good uh, after that so that's basically what the parking lot situation was at the track for the, you know from 67 to 83 it, it, that's a lot of years so it wasn't always the same situation the same conditions but basically that's how i remember the parking lot at orange county international raceway it was a car show and a parts swap meet and just a really cool place to meet great people. So another thing about the track was you'd get these vendors showing up in the pits and the pits area was kind of small. You know, they didn't have a lot of room in there. Those trailers and such and 57 Chevy Nomad station wagons hauling. Uh, I think there's eight dragsters in that picture if you can find them all. There's Don Perdome and his dragster. There is a picture of me, 1974, standing next to Don Garlis Wins Liner. These are some of the famous cars that you would see back at the time. That's probably the fastest uh, roadrunner the world's ever known. Uh, pure hell. The Fox Hunt, every year, bring your girlfriend in a bikini, she gets in free. And uh, so. Every year you'd have at least 5,000 girls in bikinis walking around and if you missed that event, all your buddies would make fun of you. You just had, you had to be there. The super track is what they used to call it. Some of these major events. The last drag race, like I said, I was there. The world finals. My favorite all-time car 
it started out as Big John Masmanian 69 Barracuda funny car and Don Schumacher's Barracuda and some of the old school front engine cars and, you know a, a view from inside the tower uh, there was actually 15 lanes with uh, driving stock you know lanes to get into the track which I only have five of them represented here and then the big fence behind the, the track where it is and the spectator tower here's a view of what the place looked like from above so I started going to all these races and and I always I had the free pass to the pit pass so I got to meet everybody and that was, I made a point of that of going up and down I met Big Daddy Don Garth, Don the Snake Perdome, Tom the Mongoose McEwen, Ed Days, you know, all of them you know Donald Don Nicholson, Dick Landy, Ronnie Sox, Bud Martin represented here my collection has some of the most notorious real representations of genuine legendary pro stock stock eliminator cars like big john masmanian's 39 chevy coupe i have a whole row of four thunderbolts with the 427 and the teardrop hoods this Volkswagen, if that's not the typical Southern California 1977 Volkswagen and love pickup truck, the paint schemes back then, <laughs> that's what they were. Speaking of paint schemes, when I got my Nomad and I went to work with it, and Junior, Al Junior said, well, when you get a respectable drivetrain in it, we'll put a respectable paint job on it. So after I came back to work with the engine implant put in it, and I come rumbling into the parking lot with that 428 horsepower full race cam and the whole thing, uh, Junior was so impressed. And he said, okay, here's my deal. I won't even make paper on this. You, you know the, the painters, Danny and Gary, you negotiate with them you pay for your own materials, you buy your own paint, whatever you want, and help them out. You know, we'll paint your car for whatever they charge. And, and Danny and Gary looked at each other and said, we can't wait, man. <laughs> and Gary says, I'll tell you what, you know, Mark, I always get like $800 to $1,000 for every job I do. And I'm going to do a $1,000 job on your car for 100 bucks." And Gary agreed. So for $200, 100 bucks to both had painters and I helped do a lot of the wet sanding and, and prepping and stuff they put a uh, you they put the candy apple red paint job on my car and after that I drove around uh, I went to the high school that I went to California uh, Mountain View continuation high school for well where that's where all the bad kids went I pull in the parking lot and and did a massive first and second gear burnout and all of a sudden my car was nicknamed Smoky Red and it became notorious in the streets of Southern California. So after a while, the, the trucks told all the vendors, you guys, you can't just park your big trucks in here. You're clogging up everything, our traffic lanes and stuff. So, and, and the truck ran right along the Santa Ana 5 freeway, which was just south of it. it that was kind of neat. You could drive by in the freeway, you know, doing like 65 miles an hour and have a dragster blow by at 265 miles an hour. It was a nice, interesting experience. But they used to tell the vendors, park your big rigs along the, the south fence there. Uh, leave as mu only enough room to get your product out, but, you know, don't eat up a lot of space. And, and then get a smaller vehicle to deliver your parts. So that's what's represented here because that's what you would see. The XL van parked along the fence, but they had a little truck that would run up and down the half mile long pits and deliver their parts. So all these major vendor vehicles are represented by the smaller vehicles that were actually there. Uh, trust me, I was there for 18 years. Uh, they would actually run all around through the pits and you know deliver their wares to all these racers that were buying the stuff. And so then all the vehicles, how about that? You, you've got, uh, You've got the Rat Fink 
which is really kind of interesting. That was a guy, I think his name was Frank Fink. I'm not sure what his first, I think that's what it was. He had a body shop in LA and, and he used to do custom work and he, he made this structure of this rat, you know, shifting a thing and uh, he called it Rat Fink and it became popular and the next thing you know it's in magazines and everything. So uh, then it became a thing. It was an item in the 60s and 70s, Rat Fink. Uh, I did the, the Raiders race car, the Dodge Coronet with the trailer and the Dodge D2. A towing vehicle. You got another Dodge, little one of those little red trucks. I put all the decals on the Chevy Corvette race team here. Then you've got the, a Plymouth 57 Plymouth, and then all these other little hot rod cars. I got a kick out of that Volkswagen. <laughs> it says "bug off" and stuff like that. And some of these things are. Are, are outrageous like for instance this red 57 Chevy tow truck it's got the original NHRA logo and it says safety safari on the fender that's so authentic because you would see if you watch the videos and the, the I, re, I saw a video about the guy who manufactures these cars he he watched videos and pictures of old drag racing and he took vehicles he saw in the racing world and he duplicated what he saw including the Southern California Timing Association they used to travel around with that van and they would make sure everything at like at Bonneville and drag strips were legitimate like your, your racetrack is 1320 feet not, not an inch more not an inch less and they would sign off they were the timing you know keepers of the timing and then I would make some of my own decals and, and make these, uh, you know, representations of what you would see. Like the Moon Race Team, when they showed up, man, they showed up in force. They were, they were local uh, over by the Long Beach area, and uh, they were very popular. So when the Moon Racing Team showed up, it's represented here. <laughs> and uh, these funny car tow trucks they're exact replicas of the real thing and uh, you, like you would have like uh, Tom the Mongoose McEwen and his truck and Bruce Larson and his truck and the Snake Perdome and his truck and so on and all the uh, real deal replicas of famous uh, wheel standard cars in fact I even have the, the photographs of those cars you know, to show how legitimate these these replicas are. Orange County. My memories of this place are just <laughs> mind-boggling. The very first, I used to have one of those, and I lost it. Uh, and I remember pulling into that gateway so many times. That's such a cool picture right there. And uh, those are the staging lanes from looking down from the tower. And the Funny Car Championships. My all-time favorite car, Shirley Muldowney's, Cha-Cha Muldowney's. That Mustang was built for her by uh, Connie Coletta, Conrad Coletta. His car was the, the bounty hunter, and then he, he made the car for Sh uh, Shirley. So my, I said earlier, my first favorite car was Big John Masmania's Barracuda. And then John came out with the 70 Barracuda, and that thing was just badass cool and so it ended up being my all-time favorite uh, car of, of all time is Ronnie Sox and Martin's Barracuda and uh, pure hell pure heaven well there's pure hell and there's pure heaven the little red wagon and hemi under glass represented right here along with all these famous uh, wheel standards. Wild Bill Shrewsbury's L.A. Dart, that was awesome. And uh, so then I started putting this collection together on my birthday, 2021. I decided I wanted to get a few cars that I owned, like my Camaro and 62 Impala and such. Then I thought I'd get a few cars that I loved from this racetrack and started my collection. And, well, here it is. <laughs> Now there's over 400 pieces from over 300 sellers. And what I would typically do is like take a picture, let's say this red 
impala and I would send him that picture then I'd send him a picture like that and 12 more pictures and, and, and tell him thanks for your contribution next thing I know I'm getting messages from him saying here you might like that Camaro or you might like this uh, Ford Galaxy and you can have it for half price <laughs> so that's how my collection ended up with uh, 234 cars I think it is just in the parking lot uh, I think there's what 13 or 12, 13 wheel stand or something like that, 3690, and uh, a whole gang load of uh, funny cars, which I'll just cruise by slowly. Uh, it took me a while to buy each one of these individually, all from uh, mostly individual sellers. Some of them sold me several of them. Uh, some people were happy to contribute. At the very end, or actually at the beginning, there's there's a copy of Masmanian's 70 Cuda, and it was at the time it was the only one I found. It was being auctioned off. I think it was up to $78. I sent the guy a private message saying I, I have to have that car, uh, but every time I bid, somebody outbids me. You know, wh wh how much do I have to pay? And I showed him a picture of this collection that I wanted to add it to. We're talking about this car right here. So the guy sends me a private message saying, I'll tell you what, I want to add my car to your collection. And, uh, but I, I will cancel the auction, but you have to be the highest bidder before I can do that legally at, for eBay. He said, so make a bid. And as, and as soon as you bid, I will cancel the, uh, auction and sell it to you so I took a risk and I bid for like I think it was eighty seven dollars and he immediately took my bid because I was leading the bid that gave him the authority to stop the auction so he, he sold it to me for twenty five dollars with a message saying uh, he's so happy t to sell it to me because he knows it's I'm not a dealer I'm not a trader this is not going anywhere. It's going to be here for decades. I own this property. In fact, uh, I don't want to brag, but I own 30 acres here in beautiful upstate New York and uh, Orange County International. So, and my son, he knows that he basically owns this place. My grandsons, speaking of my grandsons, this, this display comes with a scale 22 foot long drag strip 22 feet is a 164 scale of a quarter of a mile so that's why uh, it's it's that length and my grandsons they jump up and down screaming and yelling they love it so much the deal is they pick five cars from the parking lot i'll let them use any car as i tell them please none of the funny cars because truth is they're just too expensive they're they're a car like this is typically going to be about 12 bucks. One of those is going to be about $28 to $30. Some of them are even more expensive than that because they're rare. In fact, that Barracuda, I believe, was made in 1998 or 80, 89, I think it was. So I tell the boys, you pick five cars each. <clears throat> then you race. The loser's done. The winner can come back if he wants to. I pay a dollar per round. The winner of each round gets a dollar, and when it's all said and done, first place gets ten dollars, second place gets five dollars. So, you know, it might cost me twenty bucks, twenty-five bucks, but I'll pay that any day. You know, to watch my two grandsons have so much fun with this. It's it's not just a collection; it's a unique, one-of-a-kind display and a toy at the same time. So. There's over 400 pieces here purchased from over 300 sellers, and I'm very proud of it. So that's my new video. It's a little bit long, but it's more detailed. So thanks for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day, and, and uh, if you don't mind, uh, like this video. You don't have to subscribe. I'm not, I don't care about numbers. I only care about the right people seeing this display and being able to appreciate it for what it is. So that being said, my friends, y'all have a good day. Peace out.